Hi everybody, welcome to round one. We won the roll, and if this had one more land it would be awesome, but as it stands it is a mulligan. This is keepable. Lead out with a planes here. Um, pretty straightforward plan right now. couple of cards I wasn't sure on in terms of what we brought in and what we didn't, but hopefully we'll get a chance to see what works and what doesn't for this. Because we've got an excellent defense against ground stuff like that, and you know, if he runs out a mob boss or something, we can just switch through it. No problem. Bash for three, or two, and pass the turn. Not the general sort of thing I expected to be doing with a curve this low, but can't be helped. Take our two. Rummaging Goblin. We're playing against a deck with a theme. Unfortunately, we are not going to be able to do anything about that guy, but we'll just have to hope that uh, his looting is not a problem for us. Although there's not that much he can put out that's going to be a problem. I mean, there's nothing that can kill this shy of turn to slag, or of course volcanic geyser. This should stymie his offense for quite a while. And whoops. Um, do I want to give him the option to trade? I don't think I want to give him the option to trade because I've got this Crusader and I would rather get maximum value off of it. This kind of gets us if he has removal for the fog bank, but um, I don't think that's likely. Or rather, I don't think that's a thing worth playing around. He's getting mad value. And at this point, I wonder if he's mono-red. And this is something we're going to have to be very concerned about, because that, unlike most of the other cards he's playing, is an active and pretty significant threat. However, we can... Uh, just play our Angelic Benediction and start swinging for a lot of damage, putting him where he needs to chump block. Which is the plan. Stack our triggers. Um, if he wants to block with uh, Either of these, I'd be more than happy for him to do that. So we'll we'll block a gob we'll tap a goblin. And this means that next turn when we attack we'll be able to tap down the goblin that he doesn't chump block with. Yes. And I also do give him the option to I don't know. He didn't even chump block. That's concerning. Oh, uh, that's a thing. And kind of conveniently, he went ahead and arms dealered right now. So I think I have to, with as many goblins as he has on the board, go ahead and uh, I was going to say switcheroo, but I think encrusting the arms dealer is going to be pretty good. I'll attack for three. Go ahead and set our always yields. Excellent. 
and always yes. Take his three, go to seven T or seven, and we will reveal the card that will ruin his plans. He can have all the one ones he wants. Kindled Fury. He's digging. And found something. That's cute. Gives him one turn to block. And he's gonna attack. I don't think he knows what a fog bank does. That is fine though. Uh, hold on to that because we have no need to play it right now. Um, I would really love to get in with this Faith Mender and get some lifelink action going on. I don't think I have that choice though. I think I've got to attack with the Squire. Oh, no, I attack with the Rock's Faith Mender because the flying is irrelevant. I figured out the right line of play. It involved gaining a lot of life. Gain our six life. And at this point I feel absolutely no pressure and no reason to play that switcheroo. We don't even have to show it to him. He's gotten tremendous value off these discard effects, and us winning through that kind of shows the power of the Exalted deck here. And we're not even running the black side of things, we just have perma blockers and mad lifelink. And we get to see a bunch of extra cards in his deck, so we know to play around. It's always nice to know, like, Kindled Fury, because it's not a card you're going to see every single match, and not something you really normally... Arms Dealer. Okay. I'm not even that worried about it. He can't kill the Rock's Faith Mender, and he can't even profitably trade with it. Take a three off the Exalted here. He's letting me attack. I love Exalted Triggers. The whelp could actually four, five, six, seven. If he blocks with the whelp, he could um, trade. So we'll go ahead and tap that down. He's going to block and shoot something. Now the question is, which one does he shoot? He's shooting the fog bank. Okay, fog bank down. And he still has three goblins. Do I want to switch Rue, my Avon Squire, for his arms dealer? That's not the most amazing line of play I've ever seen, but if he untaps with this, he can wipe our board for as long as he wants to. Like, admittedly this does survive it, but he's also just going to be able to block and chump forever. So, I think we got a, it's a bitter pill to swallow, but I think we've got to.
we're kind of in trouble here at this point by virtue of how much he's going to be able to get in for with that furnace whelp and blade tusk boar. We do get to gain four a turn off this faith mender. But we're going to need to draw something to make this a winnable race. Yep. Yep. Attacking for 13. I don't think gaining four off of Rock's Faith Mender is going to be enough to get there. Okay, what do I want to draw right now? Um, oh, I can block that. I'm not used to having red creatures. Does that change the math? This is still essentially a two-turn clock. I can't imagine blocking that changing anything. And that block will still be fine next turn. Yeah. <sighs> Land is not exciting. I'll attack and see if he clicks through combat or something. Arms Dealer is a really good creature, and I handled the first one, and I kind of handled the second one. And shoot, even the Blade Tusk Boar getting in there wouldn't have been enough, but Furnace Whelp with eight lands is more than sufficient. And he's showing us some more cards. I mean, that's nice. I, I appreciate it. And he attacks me to death. Don't don't pump as per oh he figured it out. Oh what was I gonna do? Oh divination into Gain another four life turn, still not enough. Okay, arms dealer dot deck. How do we deal with that? Safe passage is good against arms dealer. Do I want to bring in the hex proof ring? He's probably got a lot of targeted removal. I could actually see that being good. Um, other than that, none of this is really exciting. He didn't show us a lot of non-creature stuff that I'm worried about. Um, things that I cut. Things that are less than impressive. I definitely want to keep the Essence Scatter in. And the Encrusts. Tricks of the Trade is probably not going to be good enough. He's probably got a lot of spot removal. And honestly, I didn't even see anything that good to switch Rue. So, we will give this a shot and see if it is good against him turning every single creature he has into incredible removal. I'll see you for the next game.